But first, joining us now, Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. He's a member of the Foreign Relations and Judiciary Committees and chairs the Ethics Committee. Senator Coons also serves as a national co-chair for President Biden's re-election campaign. We have Jonathan Lemire, Reverend Al Sharpton, and Caddy Kay still with us as well. And Senator, we'll probably be interrupting you uh, pretty much about a minute into this interview uh, or, or two. Um, 9.03 Eastern Time, another moment of silence, uh, this for uh, the moment that United Airlines flights 175 crashed into the South Tower. And of course, there are remembrance ceremonies in yeah. New York City right now. And we'll be taking that moment of silence we, live. We, we will. I'm just curious. So let me ask you a question a lot of Americans would like to know. I mean, are we safer today than we were 22 years ago? Joe, I think we are. Uh, but frankly, one of the things we have to look back on is the trillions of dollars uh, that we spent over 20 years of war around the world, uh, primarily, obviously, in Afghanistan and in Iraq, uh, but in a dozen other countries where we took action uh, in the war on terror. Uh, today, more people are killed in terrorist actions in West Africa than anywhere else in the world. Uh, we still have both uh, ISIS in West Africa and Al Qaeda uh, and affiliated groups um, in a dozen countries across the continent. It requires, it deserves more of our focus. Um, we are safer, I think, here at home than we've been uh, in previous years, but we've got real challenges. We've got challenges at home and abroad, and President Biden is just concluding a very successful trip to the G20 summit in India, uh, a visit in Vietnam. He continues to strengthen our standing on the world stage and to reinvest in the United States, making our manufacturing, our science, our competitiveness stronger. So across the whole, I would say we are safer today than we've been in previous years. And as has been the case over the past uh, 20, uh, 21 years, we are now having the reading of the names uh, from the many people who weren't alive when this happened. And Mika, it's so... Incredible that, that no student in high school, very few in college, actually have any remembrances of that day. So September 11th is history to them. Yeah, we're going to pause now and listen in to these ceremonies, to these names of what happened in New York City and in Washington and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and now 22 the years of ago. Silence. Darren Christopher Bohan. Lawrence Francis We are um, continuing the, the reading of the names. We uh, saw shots there of uh, Mayor Adams and uh, Mayor Bloomberg. Uh, of course, Vice President Harris also there, along with uh, Senator Chuck Schumer. Um, and you, uh, you, Mika, you look at, you look again at this event. This has been just, it's been a part of our lives now for almost a quarter of a century. It's, it is hard to even begin to fathom that. Uh, but uh, again, um, a completely different world almost 25 years later. And so many different um, facets of the consequences, the, the after effects of 9-11 are seen in these really important remembrance ceremonies. There are women who lost husbands who were pregnant at the time when the planes hit. And those babies that were born, 9-11 babies, are now 22 years old. It's going to be graduating, graduating from college. The, the pain that was felt by the people of New York City, uh, New Jersey, uh, Long Island, uh, it just, uh, again, an extraordinary amount of, ta uh, of pain. The, the city was ripped, uh, ripped apart, ripped to the heart uh, from, from the, 
it's just an unspeakable tragedy that nobody could imagine. 22 years later, the city uh, has uh, strengthened. It has moved on. Uh, Jonathan Lemire, uh, it's, also, uh, it, it's also created one of the most effective anti-terror units on the planet. No question there, Joe. Uh, I covered the NYPD for years uh, while at the New York Daily News, and the NYPD was at the forefront of their anti-terror efforts, often being the first line of defense um, and, and teaming up with, of course, the federal government um, to prevent something like this from happening again. And they still do that work, often quietly, often very secretly, uh, to, this, to this day. Um, so, Senator, obviously the world was remade um, that day. Uh, you, you know, and as you mentioned before, the wars the United States engaged in afterwards, do we still feel their aftershocks uh, now? Um, do you, one of the things that this president has done um, is to try to evoke that sense of unity and alliance that was very at the forefront there. The only time Article 5 of NATO was ever uh, evoked was back then. The first call that the American president received back then was from President Putin. Uh, that has changed. But you know, as, the, as this president heads back to the United States after this trip, do you feel like in, in a, the G20, where there are some unfriendly faces uh, in that room, do you think he was able to make the case that the United States and its allies, that's the best bet for the world, as opposed to, say, Russia, China, or the rest? I think he was. I think he was able to make it strongly, not just with words, but with deeds. Uh, after Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine, uh, the alliance that has sustained us, as you mentioned, NATO, which came to our aid in our defense after 9-11, uh, has pulled together to provide material troops to welcome millions of Ukrainian refugees. Um, many folks in Congress question whether our partners and allies are doing enough, and the numbers, the actions bear that out. The 47 countries supporting Ukraine have contributed as much in material, in financial support as we have, and they've welcomed millions more refugees than we have. Um, I do think that both the actions that President Biden and that global coalition of 47 countries has shown in standing up to Russian aggression and the conversation at the G20 about including the African Union, about being more attentive to the global south, about investing more in development to weave the world together in a way that reflects uh, our priorities and values prioritizing democracy, open economies, uh, better labor and environmental standards and infrastructure. I could go on, but I think the point is that uh, he made a good case. We are at a hinge point in history again now in terms of where the world is turning. Um, Xi Jinping and China is trying to offer a competitive alternative, a different vision for development and governance, the relationship between the individual and the state. And I think President Biden did a very strong job on the world stage at the G20 this week. Thank you.